Hello. Today we are going to be going through and showing how to set up the LES100 uh, development kit. Um, it should come in a box similar to this one. Um, so we open up the box, we can see the contents. Um, we have the actual development board PCB. which has the micro um, energy har micro energy harvester uh, and the wireless MCU um, BQ25570 and CC2650, both Texas Instruments parts. Uh, we also have the 40 milliamp hour uh, rechargeable lithium polymer battery. Uh, we include a flash drive, which includes hardware and software files and related documentation um, for the kit. Uh, and then finally we have the, the indoor low light solar panels um, that are used to harvest and extract the, the light energy. Um, and to help you out we included a quick start guide uh, so that you can rapidly put this thing together. Um, so we're going to be following that today uh, show show you show how that works. Um, so following the guide uh, we need the, the LES100 dev kit, obviously, uh, with all of its components. Um, we also need a screwdriver and an Android device uh, capable of Bluetooth uh, Smart. So first we're going to put together the LES100. Um, to do that, we are going to first connect the battery to the battery screw terminals. Um, so go ahead and take the battery out of the package uh, and remove the, the tape over the leads one at a time just to make sure that the, they don't get shorted together. Um, the, red, the red lead goes into the battery plus terminal. and the black lead goes into the battery minus ter terminal. Next we connect the solar to the solar screw terminals. So we only need one panel for this. The red lead goes into the solar plus terminal. And the black lead goes into the solar minus terminal. Tape this in place so that doesn't move around. Next, uh, so now the the hardware setup is complete. Um, now all we need to do is download the the the, correct, the software for the LES one hundred data monitor onto our Android device. So to do that we are going to come to the open up the Play Store and we are going to find the LES100 data monitor at application. Should be right there. Um, I already have it installed, uh, so I'll go ahead and open that. Um, this opens up the home screen to the, the data monitor app uh, where I can go ahead and, and scan for 
LES100 devices. Uh, there it pops up right there. Looks like there's another one in the office as well. So now we're connected to the LES100 device. Uh, we can see battery level, um, on-chip temperature, and then uh, lux, lux level. Um, so if we cover up the, the lux meter on the board, we can see that the, the light level um, goes down and is able to react and, and measure that. So now uh, I'm going to replace the battery uh, with a capacitor and that's going to allow us to see uh, the charging and discharging and, uh, and the power generated from the solar pa panel in real time. And to do that, I'm going to use a 1500 microfarad capacitor uh, and I'm going I'm to use <clears throat> a multimeter so that we can see the voltage on the capacitor in real time. So first I'm going to un uh, unhook the solar. and then unhook the battery. Make sure the battery leads don't short together. And then I'm going to connect the, the capacitor directly to the battery terminals. Then I can, as, uh, and then I will connect the uh, multimeter to the capacitor so that we can see the the voltage in real time uh, in the charge up phase. So as soon as I connect the solar to the capacitor, you'll see it start to charge up. And in this initial phase, uh, the charging will be relatively slow because the energy harvester is still in its soft start state. Uh, once it reaches about 1.5 volts, the main boost charger will turn on and harvest uh, power much more efficiently from the solar panel. So now you can see the main boost charger just turned on and the charge rate uh, increased dramatically. Um, and that's because the charge controller uh, uses ratio max power point tracking and is able to set the, the voltage of the panel um, at its maximum power point uh, or close to its maximum power point um, and therefore uh, it very efficiently collect uh, and harvest energy from the solar panel. Um, now that we're at 3.3 volts, that's when the, the output will turn on um, and we are, um, since we have already connected to the LES100 board, the uh, Android app, data monitor app, uh, is configured to automatically reconnect uh, as soon as it sees it again. Um, so now we can see the battery level and, and that, that changed dramatically. Um, we're sitting at the, the capacitors about 100% full if I cover the solar panel, you can see the, the battery voltage uh, or the voltage across the panel uh, starts to drop. So now we're at 78%, uh, 70%, um, and if I uncover the panel, um, the battery voltage will go back up, uh, back to 100%. Uh, 
Uh, we can play around with this setup um, to see how the, the changing the settings affects the power consumption. Um, so first what we'll do is increase the data rate um, to its, its maximum uh, for this setup. Um, so we'll look at the, we'll take the Lux meter and we will increase that to 100 milliseconds. Um, so it's going to collect and send data every 100 milliseconds for the Lux meter. Um, and we also have, need to, to change the connection parameters um, to be able to support that, that data period. Um, so we're going to change this to about 50 uh, and then go ahead and send those parameters over. Um, and it may take a little bit for the MCU to accept the, the new terms. Uh, but once that does, we should be able to see a, a smooth waveform. So there you go. Um, so now it's transmitting every 100 milliseconds, and uh, we can see a continuous waveform. Um, and you can see that the battery level is dropping because we are now consuming uh, much more power. Uh, to prevent the battery from dying, I'll just go ahead and increase this data rate back up. Um, so now it's at uh, about two seconds. And immediately, the power consumption goes back down and the battery level charges back up. So now we can go to the opposite end and see how low our power consumption can go. Um, to do this, I will turn off the temperature sensor. I will set the lux meter to, we'll just do 10 seconds. I'll set the battery period to 10 seconds. And then I'll come down to the connection parameters and I'll increase this to 750 milliseconds. Let's send over those new parameters. So again, it might take a little bit for, for the device to accept our terms, um, but it, we should see an immediate power consumption drop. Um, so I'll cover the, the solar panel up now and see how quickly the battery level drops. Um, so we can see that the battery level is dropping. Uh, it might be a little bit easier to see on this voltmeter um, now that our battery level uh, period is so long. Um, so I can uncover the panel slowly and we can see when the voltage stabilizes and how much solar is actually required to run the device. So at this point the battery, battery voltage is actually increasing again. So at, in this configuration we only require um, about a square inch of solar material to run. Um, and again, this environment is uh, about 200, 220 lux, to 212 lux. Uh, so very, very dim environment, yet we are still able to run this uh, Bluetooth configuration uh, from about a square inch of solar. Um, and that's kind of the idea of this kit is to be able to play with the, the settings and play with the Bluetooth parameters, um, play with sensors, um, and to, to figure out what, what is possible and to, to prove concepts and to just provide a starting point for developers to, to take an idea and put it to the next level um, and actually test out their ideas in a real life, a real life application. Um, so if you're, if you're interested in, in more information, I'd encourage you to, to visit the website or contact PowerFilm, and we would love to work with you to find the, the optimum best solar solution for your application.